calling to order the Public Affairs Committee meeting for June 9th. Uh, with apologies, I know there are a number of speakers who are here for public affairs. Uh, that's been a, a long wait. And in addition, we have a finance, an important finance committee uh, meeting coming up after this. I feel like we're the middle child and um, you know, we'll try to be as efficient as possible. Uh, first, a thank you to our manager and uh, Mr. Kuhl for taking some time to meet with uh, some of the uh, residents um, earlier this week on a matter of concern to them. Item one, and uh, again, I apologize to those who are waiting. We have a busy agenda. Uh, item one, uh, any discussion on the receipt of those reports? Um, am I seeing anybody? Okay. Um, let me just ask for uh, uh, our Parks and Rec Director, uh, Mr. Henson, uh, would you just uh, give a, a very brief update uh, with the opening of the pools? Or a pool and a half, I guess. 50%, whatever. You're right. Ryan, you're muted. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Um, so we opened Glenside Pool on uh, Memorial Day weekend. Um, it was a rainy weekend for an opening, but we did open the pool. Uh, after a couple of rainy days, uh, actually on Memorial Day, uh, we had some sunshine, which took us into the heat wave. And actually on Memorial Day, we had a lot of people that came out. Um, we had over 300 people who came out to enjoy the pool. So we're off to a good start. We're uh, managing to get through some of the, uh, the kinks early. Um, and I wanna thank Public Works. They've been coming out, helping me out with uh, a lot of the, uh, the uh, repairs that keep popping up, but uh, the pool is open. People are enjoying it and um, we're moving forward so we can get Conklin Pool open next. Madam thank Chair. Thank you very much, Commissioner Armin. Yes, thank you. Um, Mr. Henson, just a couple, uh, two questions sort of um, around the pools, not necessarily related. Um, th the first is that um, I, I know that the township made um, what was not an easy decision about the hours um, of opening for the pools. And um, I know that I've gotten a couple of questions um, about that over the course of the last uh, several weeks. And I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about the rationale behind the pool hours um, and um, what, why it was a difficult decision and, and why we think it's the right decision. Okay. So our pool hours from past years, uh, we opened at 12 noon and uh, we used to close at uh, 8 p.m. So this year we actually opened 12 noon. We closed the pool at three o'clock reopen at four and then close again at seven. So the reasoning behind this is we're still in the pandemic. This is all COVID related. Um, we err on the side of caution. We still have to do the um, sanitizing of our uh, restrooms and keep our staff safe as well as all the patrons safe. So that three to four hour is our sanitizing hour as well as the staff lunch hour. So um, we kept the, two, uh, the shifts to three hours. So um, it's equal on both sides uh, when people come to the pool. We also needed that last hour, that seven to eight, to actually do sanitizing again once the second crew leaves the pool. So we are ready first thing next morning. Th thank you, Mr. Hanson. And, and obviously that was in consultation with our um, Director of Emergency Management and, and others, uh, uh, other guidance, I assume, correct? Yes, uh, we, we always run everything through our EMS and management crew, um, and they've been helping us out as well. Great. Th thank you for that. The, the, other, the other question um, I want to ask is um, about um, uh, an event that was raised to my attention regarding um, some sort of ill behavior at uh, by some by some kids at, at Glenside Pool, 
And um, uh, I know that you have met with uh, some of the residents who were in or or staff met with some of the residents who were involved. And um, I just was hoping you would talk briefly about um, remind folks that their behavior should be appropriate at, at the pools and also uh, what happens uh, if their behavior sort of falls out of bounds. All right, so um, obviously we want everybody to behave well so that they can come to our pools and have a good time. Um, we get a lot of, uh, and not to pick on teenagers, but we do get a lot of um, highly energized teenagers who are having fun, but not realizing that they are doing some harm to some of the other patrons in the pool. So we just ask that um, parents, you know, talk to your kids to let them know that um, to be mindful of other people at the pools, you know, everybody has to share the pool. Everybody wants to have fun at the pool. So if, um, you know, kids are being unruly and just not listening to our staff, we have the right to suspend kids from our pool and we will do it on a case by case uh, basis. Um, hopefully we don't have to do that. We want everybody to enjoy the pool. So we just ask that, you know, everybody just come to have fun, you know, be mindful of other people at the pool and um, just let's share it and all, you know, be one big good family. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Henson. Foul language at the pool is not appropriate uh, and, uh, and will be dealt with accordingly. So thank you for that. Um, and Madam Chair, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, comments Madam, about Madam, Madam Chair? Commissioner Holland. Yep, really, really quickly, uh, Brian, thanks for working hard to get the pools open. Uh, my thought is um, I'm wondering if rather than cutting an hour short on the back end um, to clean, if you could just clean in the morning an hour before you open, uh, because that wouldn't impact uh, pool users, if, if that's a possibility. Yeah, the, uh, the issue we're going to run into is swim team. Once swim team starts, they're going to be getting to the pool at nine in the morning. So it's going to be tough to get our whole crew in at nine in the morning. And the, then they're going to sit around for, you know, two to two and a half hours before we open up. So we'll be Got paying it. them to sit around. So Got that's why we do it in the evening. Got it. Understood. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. On um, no other comments, I'll take a... First, let me just thank all the staff for those reports. Uh, I know sometimes we forget to uh, mention that aspect. So thank you all for the time and the reporting. All in favor of receipts? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, item two, the receipt of the committee meeting minutes. Um, are there any comments? I, I have a couple. Um, I want to refer to the historical commission. Uh, they've asked us, um, well, they've presented with us, uh, to us, the uh, historical marker outline and, um, and approach. Uh, I, I invited Dr. Mikowski to, to attend. If there are any questions, you all have had a chance to review those. Um, any, any comment before we move to adopt those. You know, my only concern is just make sure that the owner of the property is on board before anything would move forward, that's all. Right, and I, I think they addressed that that would be, you know, uh, one of the steps that they have to do in handling it on an individual basis. Yeah. So. Okay, then I, I will just put that forward and um, ask for your approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Um, also, um, I believe we've been asked on um, 2E to review the um, Civil Rights Task Force flyer um, to, to help promote that committee. Uh, and their goals. Um, are there any comments on that flyer? Um, I, I'd like to thank, I think, uh, again, this is Liza Maris, who, who 
was providing this. I actually have just a slight wording edit that I would recommend um, because I think we need to make sure it's something within our control. Um, I, you know, so I, I would uh, adopt language that's just a little closer to um, the way the mission statement reads. Um, so I would say something about uh, the committee uh, striving to achieve equity and respect for all people in Cheltenham Township. I'm concerned that we don't want to uh, make a statement about all Cheltenham community because we are not really, uh, it's not our jurisdiction to go beyond. So, um, you know, begging uh, your um, indulgence on a, a little bit of wording tweaking, um, I'll just go ahead and ask for the, you know, adoption um, of such a flyer with, with minor edits. Commissioner? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Pransky. Uh, the only question, caveat, or suggestion I would have is it would say a township citizens advisory committee. So it, that that's clear. Right. Thank right. you. You, you. Okay, that's another good edit. Yeah. So yeah, there are just a little tiny tweaking in there, and then it <coughs> would be up to the committee to go ahead and approve it. Okay, Mr. Rockington. Yeah, yeah, I, I do have a question. If we make those changes, do we need to come back? Do you want us to come back or just make those changes? Well, I'm comfortable. I, it's a flyer. It isn't a, a resolution. It isn't a. Uh, a just just make those changes. Want to weigh in on that? <clears throat> yeah, uh, just make think, those changes. I don't think you have to bring it back, Irv, especially no. since it's it's a committee that's making a recommendation. All right, so we'll make the changes and then we'll move forward. And, and if it'll stop Irv from coming back, I, I'm all in favor of that. <laughs> all right, if there are no other um, comments, uh, we'll move on. Uh, and uh, Commissioner Rappaport, I think I think you have a question from um, Liza Maris. Oh, okay, great. Uh, Ms. Maris. Hi, just I want to like double check what you were saying because yes, absolutely, I can change that wording. Um, so I can add Township Citizen Committee, I can add that word in there for you, Brad. And then um, instead of Cheltenham, because I'm looking, it says Cheltenham Community Members. And I heard you say Township. So you want me to get the word Township in there. So then would it read all Cheltenham Township Community Members? Is that what you were saying? No, no. It if it's okay with everybody, I don't think we want to spend the time tonight working on it. We can just tweak it later. Uh, it's it's in Cheltenham Township. It's part oh, of the issue. Oh, I see what you're so saying. It shouldn't be, so it, it needs something like achieving uh, equity and respect for people in Cheltenham Township. Yep, that's Because right. we and really I don't have jurisdiction outside. Well, yeah, and I, I think too, because then if we have folks who are here as kind of guests from Philadelphia, exactly. or being, like regardless of who you are, we exactly. will treat you right here, you know, and I think that's an important distinction to make and I thank you for it. All right, so you might just send your, your next draft to Anne just for another set of phones. <laughs> will do. Well, well, we'll, we'll discuss it later and you know, I, it's no big deal. All right, but anyway, uh, let, let us go ahead then and if there's no other uh, can, concerns about the committee uh, minutes. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, uh, take a vote. All in favor of receipt? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, item, I don't see three, so we'll jump to uh, uh, the staff, staff meeting Aye. minutes, item four. Um, uh, any comments on those? I'll go ahead and move adoption, uh, receipt rather. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item five, introduction of the new interim director, but not new to Cheltenham. We, we've been very fortunate at Glenside to have Mary Kay Moran. So I'll turn over the, I don't know if it's a quarterly report or uh, I'd probably at this point it's a, a biannual report from the library system. Welcome. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, so I've been with the Glenside Library since 2016 and a couple of weeks ago was asked by the board to step in as the interim director. And um, it's been a challenging but exciting time to step in. And I want to take a moment to thank a lot of the staff at the township who have really helped me. Um, Bob, for getting a lot of my questions answered in my steep learning curve. Um, Lauren and Ashley for keeping me in the loop communications wise and Alan Brown for his um, everlasting patience in my questions about property maintenance. Um, I'm excited to let everyone know that our branches are reopening to um, very, very close to pre-pandemic levels. Our Elkins Park branch is now fully opened except for the digital media lab, which has no ventilation. So for the moment, that's going to stay closed. Um, by June 15th, the Glenside branch will also be open. Uh, by June 18th, our East Cheltenham branch will be open. And by the end of the month, our Lamont branch will be allowing people in by appointment to use the public computers and, the, and browsing the collection and also um, to use a study corral if they need that. Um, there will be a few limitations. Um, we do have some capacity limits in the building and we will be asking folks to limit their visits to about an hour. And we are continuing to request that our users wear masks because our youngest and most vulnerable patrons cannot yet receive the COVID uh, vaccine. Um, and, but we're so excited to have all the public coming back into our buildings again. We have been open for browsing and curbside appointments and computer appointments at all of our branches, um, except Lamont, since uh, in the middle of last summer. But the ability to have everyone come back in and use the library like they used to um, is very exciting for all of us. Um, even more exciting is next Monday is the opening of our annual summer reading challenge. And this is open to all members of all ages of the community. Um, We're having some outside programs planned. Uh, yeah. We have a virtual and a paper component so people can participate however they're most comfortable. And uh, we have lots of crafts planned and um, prizes and things. So it, it's exciting to get back to almost normal. And, and I'm glad to be in, in this position while this is happening. Great. Well, it sounds like things are, are really on track. Uh, are there um, other comments from the board? Just if I may, Madam Chair. Um, uh, as as both a member of the Board of Commissioners, but also the Library Board, I'm just really happy to have uh, Mary Kay um, sort of lead, leading the charge here on an interim basis, and I'm very excited at all the prospects of sort of getting back to some level of normal with uh, the opening of, uh, of our library. So thank you, Mary Kay, um, and, uh, uh, and I look forward to working with you. I, I I think we're definitely in good hands. And I also see another member of the library board. Uh, Nathan Schultz is here tonight. Thank you for attending. I don't know if you had a comment that you wanted to add at this time. Guess not. Yeah. Okay. It's frozen. Yeah, okay. Um, He's reading. I'm sorry? He's reading. Ah, okay. Um, <laughs> I, we don't really have to do anything with that. So uh, with that, we'll just say again, thank you and have a good evening. Um, we'll move on to six, the presentation from Dr. Mert on giving Royal Avenue a ceremonial name in honor of Bishop McDevitt School. Um, so why don't you take the floor because we don't, I, I have heard nothing about this until now. Okay, uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I'm gonna share a document if that's okay. Ms. Elliott, I, I think you're in charge of the... Okay, I think I did it. 
Can everybody see that? Yes, we can. All right. Uh, good evening, board, uh, uh, the board. Uh, my name is Tom Mert, and uh, I've been teaching at McDevitt uh, for a couple months now. I actually retired from the, not retired, but I didn't seek re-election to the House of Representatives uh, last November. And uh, being a, a business education teacher by profession, uh, I took a substitute position at McDevitt, and I've been teaching there uh, regularly since uh, since the spring. And uh, they asked me to just approach the board. Uh, as you know, McDevitt will be closing. Uh, tonight was the last graduation uh, that they'll ever have. And uh, they uh, seriously would like to have some kind of permanent recognition of the school. And uh, they thought that uh, a ceremonial renaming of uh, Royal Avenue uh, where the school is located uh, might be an appropriate way to do it. You see these uh, these namings uh, around the community sometimes, sometimes done for uh, men or women who have died in service to our nation, uh, sometimes a police officer that's killed in the line of duty and so forth. And uh, I, I just took the liberty of putting together that little uh, cheat sheet that you're looking at. And Essentially, I, I thought maybe the signs might be posted at uh, Easton and Royal Avenue, and then uh, up at uh, Royal and uh, Rice's Mill. And uh, we were just brainstorming about what, what kind of names uh, they had in mind. And uh, I highlighted the one that seemed to be the most popular, uh, Bishop McDevitt Royal Lancer Memorial Highway. Uh, we are approaching the board, I'm approaching the board on behalf of the school uh, because uh, this is not a state highway uh, and it's actually under the purview of the township. And uh, it would be up to the board to uh, consider this request and then act on it if you were so inclined. And uh, McDevitt's colors being black and gold and white uh, would be uh, the requested or the suggested color scheme. So that's pretty much the, uh, the request in a nutshell. Uh, I would just ask that the board take this under advisement and uh, please bear in mind that uh, Bishop McDevitt has uh, been uh, a fixture in Cheltenham Township since 1958. And uh, in addition to uh, their normal academic program, they also have a special education mission there as well. And uh, they've uh, really done a very, very good job. And uh, uh, I've taught at many schools and I still teach part-time at Penn State Abington. I've taught there for many, many years too. And uh, I, my, my experience at, William, at Bishop McDevitt has been very positive and there's a great deal of pride there. Obviously, uh, morale is, is not great right now. It's somewhat somber because of the school closing, but uh, everyone's you know, hopeful and looking forward to, uh, to the future. And uh, the administration was hoping that you would uh, affirmatively uh, consider this request. Again, uh, this is something you might want to take a couple of weeks to think about and uh, you know, act in the future. But uh, essentially that's the request and thank you for your time. Dr. Byrne, um, a couple of questions, please. Um, if you don't mind, uh, I, I imagine there are a few of us who don't even know Bishop McDevitt was. So maybe you could just give us a little more background. Uh, Bishop McDevitt is, of course, is a, a Catholic school, which is uh, located- No, no, we know the school. Oh. I'm asking who the- it was named for a person and- uh, uh, That's correct. Uh, there was a Bishop, uh, I think it was Philip McDevitt. And uh, uh, I'm just going to uh, make reference so I can get it right. Uh, Bishop McDevitt was uh, born in Philadelphia in 1858. Uh, his family was one of the most uh, well-known and oldest families uh, from the Kensington section of Philadelphia. And uh, uh, he uh, entered the seminary uh, in the fall of 1877 uh, at the age of 19, and he was ordained in 1885. Uh, his very uh, passionate uh, interest was in expanding schools throughout the archdiocese. And he was also uh, not just a, uh, uh, a parish priest, but also uh, a teacher as well. And uh, he was appointed superintendent of schools in 1899. And under his direction, uh, uh, the Archdiocese actually started uh, high school specifically for girls. Up until that time, as we all know from history, 
uh, females were not educated with the same kind of uh, sense of urgency and passion that men were. And uh, Bishop McDevitt uh, saw that that was changed. And uh, hence the many of the girls schools that still exist, well, one's closing this year and that's uh, Hallahan, that's closing with, uh, with McDevitt this year because of the enrollments. And uh, he uh, uh, died in 1935. So he had a pretty, pretty long uh, time as a priest, pretty long tenure as a priest, uh, including the Great Depression uh, from 1929. Uh, and then, of course, he died before World War II. But uh, Bishop McDevitt was, uh, you know, a very uh, well-known uh, bishop in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. Again, uh, and his specific interest uh, was in education. Thank you. Um, well, I'm, I'm sure that uh, it is a painful or bittersweet um, loss for your, you know, for that community. Um, I might add that uh, since we've just been talking about historical markers, um, that our historical commission might have ideas of their own about um, uh, appropriate ways or uh, maybe even a different appropriate way to commemorate um, uh, this particular uh, institution. So um, are there any other questions? Or, uh, Comments from our board. Do you have a, a question, Commissioner Rappaport? Yeah, yeah, Commissioner. Uh, Dr. Merck, do you have a, a sense of how the Archdiocese is going to um, ultimately treat that building? Oh, I know it's a little great. off. I know it's a little off topic. No, uh, no, Dr. that's that's, Mike, a, that's we have a great Dr. question. Mikowski here to help with the markers, but I'm wondering, just from a standpoint, if there's some thoughts in terms of things that could be done. That would uh, that would make it a you know contributor to the township, uh, uh, Commissioner. That is an excellent question, and uh, being a uh, humble substitute teacher, I am probably not in the know on that. But I can tell you just from uh, my observations, the school building, the physical plan is in excellent condition, and uh, it's very well kept, and uh, uh, no signs of water damage or leaking roofs or anything like that. Uh, they did a very good job keeping up the building as I believe the Archdiocese uh, does in many of their, their buildings. But uh, there's been discussion about uh, Arcadia University uh, being interested in the property. Uh, that's, that's really the only, uh, I, I'm sure there's probably uh, another a developer who would probably have an interest in it as well. I mean, it's a very nice, attractive piece of property in a residential area. Uh, but, uh, but I mean, I could see it being a very uh, valuable or sought after piece of real estate for the university, uh, but no, nothing definitive or anything like that. Thank you for the answer. And I'm sorry I diverted you from the, the, the more symbolic topic. <laughs> Well, actually, Commissioner Sigmundfeld, I do think that um, that is, has been actually even when we were talking a couple of years ago about, uh, you know, potential leases and things like that, the topic came up. And I do think uh, this board does want to pursue conversations, uh, probably so that we understand in terms of our long term planning. Um, what the plans are from the archdiocese. So um, I think those conversations do need to happen. Uh, and in the meantime, then if there's no other comment, I think we will um, table this for the moment and, and uh, take it under advisement as to how to proceed. Uh, Commissioner, okay. uh, yes. out of respect to the board and your time, uh, I, I will make some inquiries, not that anybody would give me an answer, but I can certainly make some uh, genuine inquiries about what, uh, whether or not there's plans or whether or not uh, anyone has expressed an interest in, in the property or the building or both. So uh, uh, in the next- I'm happy time, to set up yeah, a meeting of some sort. That would be okay. great. And, uh, Thank you I, very much. And I, we will be in touch. I, we're not you know, uh, postponing this indefinitely, but- No, no I um, understand. We, we um, appreciate the board's willingness to, uh, to entertain this request. So thank you very much. Can I Thank you for your time. Question, uh, yes. Commissioner? Yes, Commissioner. 
Um, we and that's actually more for Tom Wykowski. Dr. Wykowski, I'm wondering if you know you have some insights into uh, particularly either uh, Bishop McDevitt or the school's contribution to the community. You're you're muted. I uh, hope I'm unmuted. Yeah, you are. Tom, can you remove your uh, slide from the screen? Certainly. Maybe. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Uh, and share. And you may also, uh, Dr. Nurk, by the way, you know, please, please uh, share that with uh, our staff and so that we have that document later. Uh, I will, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, I have a double interest <laughs> in that question. <laughs> <laughs> Great response, Tom. Yeah, sorry to see you go. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, that, that's a good question. And um, I was invited by uh, the committee of the board to consult with them on the historic preservation. And uh, we've discussed several uh, possibilities for preservation of uh, artifacts from the school and uh, includes the possibility of uh, temporary exhibits at places like the Wall House, for example. So there is, uh, there is a concern for the historic preservation of, uh, of important uh, documents and important uh, artifacts from the school. Matter of fact, they're fighting over them. So that's, that's a good sign, I guess. I, I have to ask this question. It's probably lack of knowledge on my part. Um, what in fact defines it as historic? I mean, don't take this the wrong way, but it's younger than I am. No, I, <laughs> I, I was being facetious. I, I just, <laughs> no, I don't mean you. I just meant the, the school in general. You know, it, it, it's, you know, I don't think they're going to put up a marker in my name just because I'm old here in the township. So I'm trying to understand, you know, any historic issues with the school having been here. There's been many things that have been here and not here anymore. That's why well, I'm trying to understand this. No, I'm not suggesting anything. Matter of fact, if you read our criterion of the previously discussed historic markers, uh, I putting on my other hat, I'd say it would have a tough time qualifying. Okay, so, I, I thought maybe I misunderstood something, but I just my sign was just being facetious. No, I, I like the sign. I went there; it's historic. I don't know. Yeah, that that, <laughs> that in itself is worth memorializing. The, the issue usually is also, um, if not the place being historic, but its association with people of importance. Uh, either a contribution or uh, that kind of thing. So th those would be some of the things that would determine how we want to proceed. Okay, uh, if there aren't any other comments, we'll thank you, Dr. Merck, for, for your long, uh, for your long sit. And we appreciate okay. you. Uh, you know, I uh, was a friend and a former colleague of uh, Representative Steve McCarter. We were very close, right. and he spoke very well of uh, uh, of your board and the great work that you're doing. And I certainly concur with that. Uh, Seth threw some very good information tonight, uh, especially your report from the police, and uh, I was very impressed. So keep up the great work. Thank you. We also appreciate your service. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I Item seven, um, presentation from Friends of High School Park, Cynthia Black. Thank Blatt. you for your patience, you. Cynthia. Oh, sure. I haven't fallen asleep yet, so maybe you won't fall asleep while I talk. Um, well, I came before you guys, thank you, a little bit ago for a blessing to start thinking about a project for the hillside um, that is facing the apartment complex on High School Road. So now we've thought more about it and we need to figure out where the money's come coming from. So I'm applying for a 2021 Healing the Planet grant funded by the giant company. And we're seeking uh, $25,000 and calling the project the Hillside Native Sun Perennial Garden. And we are not the owner of the 
land, obviously you guys are. So the application requires a letter of support from the owners of the land. So that's what I'm asking you to do. And so I have a quick synopsis of what the garden is in our heads so far. If I could just read it for you. Sure. So the parameters are four perennial gardens to be located along the parts front hillside, extending from the entrance driveway at the corner of the high school road and Montgomery Avenue down the hillside toward high school road. Gardens will no, be no larger than eight feet by 10 feet in kind of ovalous shapes. <laughs> Each garden will be planted with native perennial flowers with small shrubs around the edges, bordered with stone retaining walls under three feet built into the hillside. So far, one garden has been defined as a tribute to the Lenape tribe and their native medicinal plants. All gardens will also include educational signage, which mirrors the backyard native shade perennial garden across the way at the upper entrance to the park. Paths will wind in and around the gardens, allowing the visitors to examine the plants, read the educational signs, and make notes for their own home gardens. Entrance, entrance to the gardens and their paths will be from the side and or from the top edge along the driveway. The knee-high fencing at the edge of the handicapped parking area will be extended down the driveway toward the corner for safety. We've already received a grant to do that part. Native grasses will be planted along the inside of the fencing. And that's part one. Part two of the project will be the planting of a native fruit orchard down lower on the hillside towards the sidewalk, but at a distance so that any fallen fruit would not be a problem for people walking by. Berry bushes would be planted on the far side of the hillside away from the corner and toward the inside of the park. So as always, we will approach the project in stages, applying for grants, do fundraising sh shout outs and approach the volunteers for the final planting. So I'm asking you as the owners of high school park land for support in our endeavor to, to continue our stewardship of the park for the education and enjoyment of the community. There you go, wanna say yes? I think you have also a, a Q and A uh, sheet that you'll send around uh, to us as well. Well, I just have that sheet that I sent to you and to Mitch, just as if you had any questions specifically. I mean, I can send this out, just what I read to you guys. It's the same thing. Cynthia? That would be great. Cynthia, yeah. I, may yeah. not, I might yeah. not have is heard. Is that red? Yeah. Oh, there you go. I, I might yeah. not have heard this one. Is that, what kind of fruit are you talking about? Native fruit, so um, pawpaw trees. Have you ever had a pawpaw? They're really uh, delicious, like, no. like a pudding. No. Okay. You can have a pop-up <laughs> uh, party at some point. They're very. I didn't want to try to say that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, persimmon trees, not not an apple orchard or a pear orchard, because they're not native necessarily. I, so I, I just wondered if I wanted to be there to catch the falling fruit. That's all. Yes. Well, pawpaws are pretty big. You need two hands to catch a pawpaw. So. So are we worried about injury when somebody's standing under it when it falls? Right, that's why I said specifically, it's not gonna be close to the sidewalk. It's up a little bit farther, so okay. yeah. Judging by the rest of the park, we, we are pretty confident in your uh, horticultural skills and that it will be an asset. Uh, I think I saw somebody else's hand I up. Did, uh, did up go ahead, yeah. Uh, Cynthia, I'm just wondering, you know, beyond the, the giant grant, are there other grants that you're looking for either from public or private funding sources? I know that, you know, the, the amount of work you do and the things that the uh, high school park brings to the, the area in particular are really valuable and critical. And I'm just wondering, are there other things that uh, you're looking for our support from beyond just the giant grant? Well, I will call on you again. I'm sure if we, I find another application we just, I just haven't found one yet. <laughs> so okay. we do have um, members, our, our steady fundraising members that have already come and offered, say, tell us, not necessarily in a matching grant program, but tell us what you need or tell, it, tell us what's left over. So we have possibilities out there. The more research I can do, the better, so. Well, we also have some new businesses there and maybe we can do some programs that are tied into you know, the food area, the, the 
beer and wine area and that kind of thing and just work some opportunities around there to be able mm -hmm. to find other sources of money. Sure. Lenape Ale, huh, Mitch? Lenape Ale. <laughs> I don't know that. Does that exist? <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, job, Cynthia. And obviously you have our support and anything we can do to help. It's It's been a great addition to the area. Absolutely. Well, thanks. So I'm not quite sure who would be in charge of writing the letter. Okay, but so, so that was going to be my next question. Um, do you want this? Uh, I don't want to volunteer staff unless um, uh, they don't mind and we can work uh, you know, together to come up with this letter. Um, uh, well, I can Kelly, is you the one who does grants? Uh, uh, is this something that uh, uh, the three of us should work on or something like that? Um, well, generally speaking, um, if somebody's looking for a recommendation from the township, if you wouldn't mind drafting a letter um, right. that outlines everything that you're looking for from us and we'll review it and put the appropriate signatures on it and our, on our letterhead. Okay. And Cynthia, I'll be happy to write a separate letter in support as well. Thanks. Okay. Um, that'll be great. We'll, we'll just make it formal all in favor. Aye. Uh, Aye. 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 Support. Thank you Thank very, you very much. much. Thanks for your stewardship. Yep. Good night. Good night. Good night. Um, item number eight for public affairs, the report of the township manager, Mr. Zinkaski, please. Yes, yes I will, We heard uh, from him earlier. Yes, we did. I'll keep my comments uh, short. Um, we'll need to um, discuss facilities uh, coming up here uh, in the near future, possibly between multiple committees next month. Um, a brief synopsis is our facilities are in declining condition um, and there are significant expenses coming. So um, if uh, public works, public affairs and finance are willing, we'll split it up between the three committees. Uh, we'll take each committee can take a piece of the pie. Sure. Um, are you suggesting though that before we go divvying it up that we perhaps, I thought in a previous communication, you had implied that we should do some uh, more of a long range kind of uh, theoretical planning, uh, overview kind of planning. Do you have a, a sense for wanting to do that in advance or what? I, I think um, we can, uh, because all your time is precious is public works to address the, the current conditions, um, public affairs, uh, a future look and finance of the impacts currently of what we're looking at expenses and uh, the potential of expenses into the future if we decide to uh, consolidate or streamline or redo facilities. So maybe a three pronged approach. Yeah. Thank you for the heads up. Okay. Any any that's all I have. Comments or questions from the board on that. Okay. Uh, new business for public affairs. Old business for public affairs. Expenditures. Item eleven. A. Consider recommending the board of commissioners approve. A purchase order for a 10 track to in the amount of $24,100 to recolor coat, line, and do crack repairs to the Ogons tennis courts. See attached. And I did have a question about that. Um, it sounded like the, um, it, unless I'm, I'm conflating two different things, it sounded like the tennis courts were going to resume on the bottom. And uh, the skateboard park was going to be up top. Is that is that the current uh, plan? Well, um, it's 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 an idea. It's not the current plan. Um, okay. Right now we have three full tennis courts there. Um, so the lower two courts are the courts that are always used the most. The upper court. Um, tends to have a lot of debris because of the trees around it. So people tend not to use that court. Um, so an idea, it just came up um, about maybe 
if we could relocate the skate park from Wall Park, um, maybe moving it to Ogons and using that upper court. So that was just an idea, a concept that's being um, talked about um, at the staff level. And um, in the future, maybe we can bring a more better presentation to you uh, about the skate park. Okay, so this is not like a two-part thing. This is strictly, uh, you're asking for the, the lower courts to be redone. Just the lower courts, yes. Yeah. Because the upper court does not get a lot of use, so we can save that money at this point, especially if we decide to actually convert that to a different use. Okay, other questions, comments? All right, uh, I'll take a motion. Come on, audience participation. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Item B, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for CNC family roofing and siding in the amount of $2,800 yeah, to replace the roof of the uh, carbon dioxide room at Glenside Pool. Any comments, questions? I would make to approve it. To approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving along. Consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for Henry J. Thompson Plumbing and Heating in the amount of $2,985 for plumbing repairs at the Glenside Pool. To no comments? It. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Any announcements for public affairs? Any citizens forum for public affairs? Okay, uh, we still have a finance committee coming up. So I'll take a, a motion to adjourn toward that. Paper, aye. 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 Thank you.